Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a round robin or alternating samples effect in the EXS24 sampler in Logic Pro 9. Now, if you're not familiar with round robin, it's a technique you can use to cycle between multiple samples to create a more natural sound. Uh, for example, if we had four snare drums um, and we had, say, a 16th note uh, snare drum pattern, if we were to make each sample um, alternate between one of those four sixteenth notes, you're going to have a much more natural sound. If we only had one sample uh, playing all four sixteenth notes, you're going to have a very robotic, unnatural sound. So it's a way to bring a, a more human character to your recordings. Um, so I have Logic open here. I have a software instrument open. I'm just going to rename that drums. I have an adaptive limiter open here. Don't worry about that. That's I'm just using that to uh, beef up the sound a little bit so you can hear uh, the recording a little better. I'm going lo-fi today. I just have the computer speakers, uh, you know, picking up through the uh, the built-in uh, microphone input. So pretty lo-fi today. In my channel strip in the I/O section, I'm going to insert an instance of the EXS24 in stereo. I'm going to go ahead and arm the track so I can hear it when I play. And if you double click on the EXS24, it opens up the synthesizer window. And if you click on edit, it opens up the edit window. The edit window is where we can drop in our samples and create zones for each sample. A zone is essentially just a blank space for, that can hold exactly one sample, but not, not multiples. In order to create hold multiple samples, you have to use a group. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and load in uh, some samples. I'm going to go new zone. And on this blank zone, I'm going to load in a sample. I have some uh, drum samples here. I have four kicks and four snares. Uh, just for purposes for today, um, again, because I'm kind of going lo-fi today, um, I am going to create a round robin effect between a kick drum and a snare drum, as opposed to doing, you know, say, two kick drums or two snare drums. Um, you may not be able to hear the difference between the two, um, just because of the lo-fi nature of this uh, video today. So I'm going to do two different drums so you can hear the timbral difference. So load in a kick drum, load in a snare drum. Uh, down here in the GUI section, these bars are showing the key range of each sample. So because the root key, the root pitch of each sample is C3, I want to make sure that these samples are only being triggered by the note C3. Right now, the way we have it, the samples are being triggered by all of the notes on my MIDI keyboard. So the higher you go, the higher up tune it's going to be, the lower you go, the lower down tune it's going to be. So I'm going to just drag these. Um, so we're just being triggered by C3, which is middle C in Logic by default. Pull this in here. There we go. Um, if I were to pull these notes up higher, you'll notice that the key range changes, but the pitch does not, the actual root pitch does not. So we're just going to get an uptuned sound. And I'm hearing both of them at the same time. Now, you'll notice that when I quickly click on the um, sample, I only hear a portion of the sample. Uh, if you want to hear the full drum sample, you have to make sure and t uh, turn one shot on. What a one shot is, is a sample that plays from start to finish regardless of how long you hold down the key. I'm also not using a MIDI controller today, I'm just using my uh, Mac keyboard, so I'm going to hit the caps lock button to bring up my keyboard controller, and now I can uh, use my uh, Mac keys as a controller. I believe K is middle C. There it is, and now even if I just tap on the note, I hear the full sample. Now the way round robin works in Logic is you have to create two groups, assign each zone to a different group, and then make the second group be triggered by the first group. So whenever you play group one, which is zone one, um, it tells group two, zone two, to be triggered and to be to play next, and they alternate, you know, uh, zone one to zone two, group one to group two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to group, new group, and I'm going to create two new groups. It, for some reason, it defaults as group two and three instead of one and two, but I'll go in and rename these. And now I can go up to view zone group, and this is where I can assign each zone to a different group. So I'm going to tell my zone one to go to group one. I'm going to say zone two, go to group two. 
So in my group view up here, there's a, I'm going to hide this envelope too, just to create a little more space. I'm going to go up to view, select group by, group by, excuse me. This is where we can trigger the first group to be, uh, excuse me, uh, trigger the second group to be triggered by the first group, essentially. So under type, you're going to select group for both. And then for group, for the second one, you're going to choose group one. So we're telling group two to be triggered by an instance of group one. Now you can do this with three or four groups if you want. You can add another group in. So you can make group three be triggered by group two. You can make group four be triggered by group three. It'll cycle through the whole list of groups. Now when it gets to the end, it automatically goes back to group one. So you don't have to set group two up here or group, you know, or group four in the case of four samples. You don't have to set anything for number one. And by the way, it won't work if you do. So. So now that I have it set up this way, I'm going to hit my sample here. So you can hear the alternating between the kick and the snare. And there you go. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I plan on uh, making many, many more videos, including uh, Logic, Ableton Live, and Pro Tools as well. Maybe some Melodyne, maybe some Recycle. Um, so... Stay posted.